In today's video, I'm going to give you guys the ultimate guide to gaming accessories in 2024. I'm going to list off some of the best options as well as some of the best for your budget options for mice, keyboards, desks, microphones, headsets, everything that you will need to start gaming. I will provide both a best option and a best budget option for. Howdy, my name is Timmy, here with Sirius Power PC. Before we get too far into this video, if you wouldn't mind going ahead and leaving a like, that way you see more videos like this in your feed, as well as subscribing with the notification bell on so that you don't miss our weekly videos. This video will be featuring an article from our website, so I will leave that linked in the description down below if you want to check out the full length article, do a little bit more reading, do a bit of your own research for things like that. There are a lot of different options for gaming PC accessories slash peripherals out there, and not all of them are created equal. So let's get into this by first looking at what the best gaming desks are. All of these links to these different gaming accessories will be in the article down below, that way you can check them out if you want to, because the description would be really, really long if I posted every single link that we had. So, the best gaming desk overall, not best budget option, the best gaming desk overall is the Secret Lab Magnus Pro XL Desk. I have heard a lot of people absolutely rave about this desk. People absolutely love it. Some of the pros that this desk has are a sleek modern design as well as very very precise like almost hilariously precise electric height adjustment so you know if you want to transition to working while standing up or gaming while standing up because it's good to stand up every once in a while you can set settings on your desk to where you basically just push a button and the desk raises up with everything on it. It has magnetic accessories. Now granted, they are going to charge you extra for those magnetic accessories. So like if you want an under desk PC mount so that your PC raises up with your desk, if you don't want to set your PC on top of your desk, you can buy one of those. However, they are going to charge you extra for stuff like that. So do be aware of that additional charge. You can really personalize this quite a lot and it is made of an ultra durable steel chassis. Cons for this desk are definitely the price point. Last I checked, now I could be incorrect, this thing is over $700. It is not at all a cheap desk, so if you're working with a budget, you probably want to look at our budget option for gaming desks, which would be the, that's gonna be fun to say, Minosis computer desk that you can find on Amazon. Some of this desk's pros are that it is an easy to set up desk, it's quite stylish and minimalist, it has space for multiple monitors, laptops, and gaming accessories, so you're not confined to just a tiny tiny space barely big enough for your mouse pad. It has a durable scratch resistant and waterproof surface, however some of the cons of this desk are the limited color options. You aren't going to be able to uh, customize this desk quite as much as you could the Secret Lab Magnus Pro XL. That is our budget gaming desk option, but now let's move on to the gaming chairs with ergonomic design. So the best overall chair is the Secret Lab Titan Evo. If you have watched many YouTubers at all, you have at some point seen this chair. Someone you watch on YouTube probably has one of these chairs. Uh, and it's a simple fact is Secret Lab makes great products. They make quality products that last. Some of the pros of this chair are the advanced ergonomic design. I mean, in terms of ergonomics, this chair really does have quite a bit figured out. As far as racing gaming chairs go, they're comfortable. I've sat in one before in a micro center. It was very comfortable. It was one of the more comfortable computer chairs I've ever sat in. Now the cons of this slash these chairs are that it may be too large for smaller spaces. There may be, these are larger chairs, but I believe you can choose the chair size as well if you order it from Secret Lab themselves. So I would look into that if you're considering this chair. These chairs are also a bit more on the pricey side 
for an office chair. However, yet again, the best budget option, which is the best office brand gaming chair that you can find on Amazon. Some of this chair's pros are the comfortable and supportive design, the adjustable lumbar support and headrest pillow. I cannot stress it enough. The chairs that have a built-in headrest pillow need to be stopped. Like this chair, for example, has a headrest pillow that is frankly extremely uncomfortable so i removed it and some chairs that i've seen don't allow you to remove the headrest pillow so that is very very important i really like that about this chair durable construction it has easy setup which i can confirm i have a pretty basic amazon gaming chair this was easy to set up it took me like 20 i think 20 25 minutes uh, it has adjustable reclining, and it reduces tension in shoulders and spine. Now, that may vary by person. For for some people, this chair may fare worse than the Secret Lab chair, but I do also know that some people very much dislike racing chairs as a whole, but we are recommending gaming chairs, and racing chairs do have it figured out for gaming. So the best overall keyboard in this category is the Asus ROG Strix Scope 2 96 Wireless. Now, I am a little bit biased and I'm going to talk about that in just a minute, but let's go ahead and look at these two keyboard options. So the pros of this are very high quality materials, the tri-mode connection, smooth keystrokes, easy wireless connectivity, long battery life, which I did not know that this was a wireless keyboard, long battery life, very, very important, and the compact layout frees up desk space. This, while it is a full-size keyboard, is a compact full-size, so that numpad isn't way off to the side, way over there. Cons for this keyboard are that the compact layout may cause you to hit keys over here on this numpad, like if you're trying to hit backspace, there's a chance you may hit numlock just because you're going a little bit too far, but that's nothing that some touch typing can't fix. And this has limited compatibility with certain devices. I would assume that means you can't connect it to a Mac, most likely, which then again, you probably aren't gaming on a Mac. If you are gaming on a Mac, you're probably not going to try to be using a wireless keyboard. Regardless, there are some connectivity issues with certain devices. However, the best budget keyboard would be the Razer Ornata V3. The pros of this keyboard are the low profile design, that it's comfortable, it provides quiet typing. If you're in an office space and you decide to use a gaming keyboard, please, for the love, don't buy something with clicky switches. Buy something with either silent or quieter switches. The Razer Ornata is a membrane keyboard, so you're not gonna have quite as much reliability as switches. However, it is significantly cheaper than the ROG Strix Scope 2. I'm gonna try to explain this in a really, really short manner and not absolutely nerd out about keyboards because I really, really love keyboards. With specifically the Razer Ornata V3X, it's a membrane keyboard, and if you aren't that into keyboards, you might not know what that means. Basically, a membrane keyboard is the entire keyboard is just a layer of membrane. It's basically the entire keyboard is just one switch or a couple of switches that communicate with your computer. Whereas a custom keyboard, literally every single key has its own switch. I am hoping that we're going to be making some videos coming soon on custom keyboards, how you can make custom keyboards a bit on the cheaper side, and how you can potentially get into custom keyboards. Now, let's move on to gaming mice. So, the best overall mouse is the Razer Death Adder V3 Pro. It's a great mouse. <laughs> a lot of people love it. A lot of people swear by it. Uh, the pros are the ultra lightweight design, the flawless tracking performance, it's durable and responsive, it's very low latency, so even though it's a wireless mouse, you're going to have extremely low latency, and 90 hours battery life. Yet again, if it's wireless, you don't want to have to charge the thing every single night, so 90 hours of battery life is really, really good. And cons are issues with the scroll wheel. Now, I personally don't have a Razer Death Adder V3 Pro. I do have a Razer Basilisk V3, but that's more of an editing mouse than a gaming mouse. And I really, really love mine. I don't personally have any issues with the scroll wheel, but I have heard a little bit about the Razer Death Adder V3 Pro 
having some slight issues with the scroll wheel. Uh, our best budget mouse option is the Logitech G203. This mouse offers a sleek design. It's a comfortable mouse. It has customizable RGB lighting, which most mice with RGB are going to have customizable lighting. If you're paying more than $30 for a mouse that has RGB, it should have customizable lighting. Uh, it has an 8000 DPI gaming grade sensor, 6 programmable buttons, crisp clicks, it's an affordable option, and it's compatible with PC and Mac. So if you want to use this on your MacBook or Mac Studio or whatever you have for that, you can use this with your Mac. Next up, we are looking at gaming routers. So the best overall router is the TP-Link Archer AX11000. It has 8 gigabit LAN ports and is easy to set up. However, the large size of this router may not fit well in all environments, which I mean, look at the thing. It looks like an alien spaceship. Let's get real here. And the best budget router that we would recommend is the D-Link Wi-Fi router AC1750. Some of the pros of this router are the powerful dual-core processor, improved connection speeds, easy setup, dual-band Wi-Fi, and smooth performance. However, a big con of this router is that it does not get the fastest speeds compared to higher-end routers. So now, let's talk about monitors. In terms of monitors, the best overall monitor we would recommend is the Dell Alienware... That's a lot of numbers. A, W, 3, 2, 2, 5, Q, F. Some of this monitor's pros are the OLED display, as well as the curved monitor design, the versatile connectivity, the high refresh rate, as well as the tear-free gaming. However, cons, High price point, this monitor is going to run you quite a lot more. Most stuff from Alienware is going to run you quite a lot more than regular uh, or budget options. And it requires a powerful graphics card for optimal performance. That is yet another issue with higher end monitors is that they require a higher end graphics card for optimal performance. They also draw a whole lot more power. And the best budget monitor is the Dell G2724D. Some pros are the QHD resolution, the 165Hz refresh rate, the 1 millisecond response time, some of the customizable settings with this monitor, as well as the ergonomic stand and high quality performance. However, the cons are that it has a limited I.O. I just checked and all that this monitor supports is one HDMI cord or two DisplayPort cords, which is not the end of the world, but is fairly limited compared to some other monitors. Now, let's look at gaming controllers. The best overall controller is the Scuf Instinct Pro. If you're into gaming at all, especially gaming controllers, you've heard of Scuf. You know who they are. You know that they make very, very high quality products that typically cost quite a bit more than a regular controller. Some of the pros of this controller are the customizable paddles on the back as well as the comfortable grip compared to some stock controllers, uh, the variety of colors, the instant triggers, the triggers on these controllers. I've used one once and they're like insane as well as the interchangeable thumbsticks are really, really nice. The main con of this controller is that the back paddles may be awkward to use, especially if you're used to gripping your controller like I am, then this is how I typically hold it, and the back paddles are usually right about here, so that could interfere with your gaming, potentially. And the best budget controller is the Xbox wireless controller. This is just a better option, in our opinion, than a lot of wired controllers, or third-party controllers just because the Xbox wireless controller is very very reliable I have like six of these things okay it's kind of ridiculous uh, pros of this controller are the sleek and comfortable design the share button especially on the newer controllers that's really cool that they bake that right into the controller it's compatible with multiple devices as well as plug and play connectivity however the cons are it requires frequent battery replacement you can also fix the frequent battery replacement by buying some rechargeable batteries off of Amazon and just put the controller on the stand when you're done playing your game. Now we'll move on to a gaming UPS. So the best UPS overall that we would recommend is the CyberPower CP1500 PFC LCD. That's a lot of letters. 
some of the pros are the easy monitoring, the automatic voltage regulation, multiple outlets, USB ports, which is shockingly rare on UPS devices, which I didn't realize until I recently bought a UPS, uh, as well as its three year warranty. However, the cons are issues with battery life and noise. And the best budget option for a UPS is the CyberPower EC650 LCD. The pros of this UPS are the compact and slick design, the easy monitoring, as well as the easy setup and installation. From the look of it, you probably literally just plug it into the wall and it starts monitoring. The cons of this UPS are battery performance issues. I've personally never had a CyberPower UPS, however, with this being, I would imagine by the name EC650 means it's probably only a 650 watt UPS, so... That could run into some issues if you, like, aren't home and your power goes off, but this is the budget option after all. As far as VR headsets go, the best overall VR headset is going to be the Valve Index for a couple simple reasons. The high resolution dual displays, this is much more comfortable than a lot of other VR headsets. It has, especially if you buy additional trackers, much more accurate tracking than a lot of other VR headsets as well as compatibility with other VR games and easy integration. Now, the cons are the higher price point. There's just really no way around it. The higher price point isn't great, as well as issues with the base station reliability, which I don't know. I don't know. I don't do a ton of VR, so I don't know a whole ton about uh, the base station reliability with the Valve Index, but I know a lot of people absolutely love theirs, so it would be worth checking out if you're in the market for a VR headset. And the best budget option is the Meta Quest 2. In our opinion, in our opinion, in our opinion, okay? It, all of this is in our opinion. I know some people will probably flame us for saying that the Meta Quest 2 is better option than the Meta Quest 3, but guess what? The Meta Quest 2 still works, and it still works well. It's really, really impressive how much this thing has upgraded in the year I've had it. It's really, really cool, and if you're looking at getting into VR, I would recommend this headset because you can plug this into your PC and you can play. Obviously, it's limited in some aspects, but some of the pros are the comfortable design. I personally would disagree with that. <laughs> uh, if you are looking at doing much gaming at all for any extended period of time, I would definitely get the pro head strap because the base head strap just isn't super comfortable after a long time. The touch controllers are great. I have run into one or two issues with the touch controllers, but that's only because I didn't play for quite a while and I let the batteries corrode in the thing and it was a pain in the butt to replace. However, you probably won't be dealing with that, hopefully. Hand tracking, very cool feature. Very surprisingly accurate on this cheap of a VR headset. I say cheap, not like poorly built but cheap monetarily wise compared to the valve index of being like you know i think 800 900 dollars the meta quest 2 is i think around 300 so it's significantly cheaper uh no pc or console required for this headset it's literally standalone all you really need is an internet connection however the cons of this headset are the limited battery life which you can get a battery that mounts to the headset strap off of Amazon for like 20 bucks that boosts your playtime for two hours. So I would recommend that if you're planning on not playing with this plugged into something, which most people don't want to. Gaming microphone. Now, the best option that's listed here is the Shure MV7. Some of the pros are the dual USB slash XLR connections, as well as the touch panel controls, the built-in headphone output. That's good. Your microphone should have a built-in headphone output. Even if you don't use it, if you do need it at some point, you would rather have it than not have it. The advanced audio processing, as well as this mic is just durable. I've used a Shure mic for a couple different projects. Those things are ridiculously durable, as well as the great sound quality. The best budget microphone on our list is the Razer Siren Mini. And some of the pros are the sleek design, the high quality materials for the price, the impressive sound qu clarity for the price. However, the cons for this mic are that the positioning may be challenging because it is a really, really tiny microphone, which you would 
think would be good, but it's a little harder to mount than some other microphones just because it can be a bit more in the way. But that is our budget option for the gaming microphones. Finally, let's look at our external hard drives. So, as far as our best option, we would recommend the WD Black P50. Some of the pros of this external hard drive are the absolutely blazing fast SSD speeds. It's shock resistant, it's very portable, very high performance, has extremely fast data transfer, and it is compatible with PC, Mac, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and Xbox model, which is just awesome. It's good that it's compatible with a bunch of different stuff. However, the cons are the temperature related issues during extended use. That makes sense. It's an SSD, thing's gonna get really hot and it can have some occasional buffering or loading. Finally, our best recommended budget external hard drive is the Seagate portable drive. Some of this drive's pros are the five terabyte storage capacity, as well as the lightweight design, the fast data transfer, and it is also compatible with pretty much all systems, PC, Mac, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and Xbox. It has very plug and play setup, and it is constructed quite sturdily. So that is our ultimate guide to gaming accessories in 2024. If you guys want to check out the full length article and get some more information about these different accessories, I'll leave that link in the description down below. Also, check out our affiliate program. I'm going to leave a video link to our full video about that in the top right hand of the screen right now. That way, you can check it out because we have some really, really cool stuff going on with our affiliate program that we're really, really excited about. Thank you also so much for watching this week's video. Be sure to leave a like, that way you're recommended more videos like this and from us. Subscribe if you don't want to miss our weekly videos on anything and everything tech related. We're also hoping to potentially start streaming fairly, fairly soon. Thank you all so, so much for watching. My name is Timmy, here with Sirius Power PC, and be sure to tune in next week for a brand new video.